Thanks for joining me for another edition of Grew with Portia. I'm your host, Portia Booker, and yes, this is my real name. Grew with Portia targets those who are curious, eager, and hungry for new information that can aid in their personal and professional development. Malcolm X once said, education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Never stop learning. Be a sponge for the rest of your life. Before I jump into my topic for today, I want to start off with a little history lesson. Thanks for joining me in the studio today, Miss Ashley Bakewell from It's Just Lunch Cleveland. Welcome, Ashley. Hi, thanks for having me. No, thank you for joining me on, you know, this nice day here. Uh, So today is National Package Protection Day. It encourages homeowners to stay alert during these high delivery times the Wednesday after Thanksgiving is a reminder to for all of us to protect our packages that are delivered from theft, which becomes more and more prevalent during the holidays. The Internet has made it easier to find deals and have packages shipped straight to our homes. But this has also made it easier for thieves to snatch our deliveries right from our doorsteps. Cyber Monday in particular is a big online shopping day where most purchases are shipped directly to the buyer's home. With the advent of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, there became a need for a day that raises awareness of package theft and helps homeowners protect themselves against thieves. And just like that, Package Protection Day was born. So, Ashley, have you started your Christmas shopping yet? Uh, I I have not yet, actually. But I do do a a lot of online Christmas shopping. So um, I'm glad you're reminding me of this um, today. Yeah, you know, I haven't ordered anything yet online um probably within the next you know week or so i may do a few things but i think one of the biggest takeaways from this is if you're gonna have stuff delivered and you know you work long hours just ask maybe you know a friend who works from home or a family member who may be retired who's gonna be at home all day to have your packages delivered there yeah or have them come to your work right I mean, yeah. I've, I've, I've done that before. Yeah, it's been a, you know, but it also depends on people's jobs, their restrictions on, you know, if you can have That's personal true. packages and whatnot. You know, we, um, this past summer, we had a uh, porch pirate <laughs> situation. <laughs> porch pirate. <laughs> um, my sister had ordered um, some little uh, thing for her iPhone. Okay. You know, the little, the newer iPhones don't, uh, they're not compatible with regular headphones. Right. So you have to get that little piece to yeah. put into the bottom. Well, she ordered it from Amazon and, you know, she had texted me and my mom saying, oh, you know, my package is there. So I go outside and the package is open and there's nothing in it. <gasps> I'm they like, left the package? It, they took whatever was in it. That's so weird. I mean, because literally, you know how you get the packages that have the bubble inside? Right. I mean, literally, when you picked it up, it was the white Amazon, you know, package. And then right. the top part had the slit open. So wow. I called my sister. I said, Carla, I said, you might want to, you know, call Amazon because I don't know what's going on here. I mean, I don't know if the, if the driver took it. I don't know if, you know, <laughs> if, right. some, if somebody, you know, was walking down the street and saw the delivery truck from Amazon in front of our house. And maybe they came up on the porch once the Amazon truck pulled off. I don't know. I, I think, though, the, the end of the story, my sister was able to get a refund from Amazon. That's good. So see, that's good. I I love hearing that. You know, those things they happen. You know, it's so Grinch like to me though. You know, with Christmas and I mean, these are Christmas gifts. You know, and people stealing them. It's just so. It's sad. That stinks. Right, and it's not yours. Right. <laughs> I, I think that's the gist of it. You know that it does not belong to you, so don't touch it. Yep. Yep. I mean, I hate hearing stories where. You know, people have their Christmas trees up um, like a week before Christmas. All the presents are underneath the tree. And I hate it when people break into their house and steal all their hard earned money's worth gifts for their kids, their loved ones. I hate hearing that. Me too. 
so sad. Yeah, I mean, you know, but the holiday time is it's it's not always a happy time for everybody, you know. Yep, this is true. I mean, some people, you know, they they don't always get along with their families. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, some people may not have um, family that's close by. Um, And it's always hard when a family member who's been the life of the party is no longer here. Right. Definitely challenging. We have that in my family, but my great-grandma, she was 102 when she passed last year. Oh, wow. And... The holidays haven't been the same without her. But one of the things I try to do is keep her legacy alive yeah, during the holidays. That's, that's important. That's good. I'm glad you do that. It's hard. Um, same with my dad. He was kind of the, the he, he passed away about seven years ago, but he was the one that always got the family together, that would do the fish fries, that would do all the cooking. Um, and we have a pretty big family, but after he passed, it just, you know, it wasn't the same. It's definitely a lot different and a little more challenging over the holidays. But my brother and I definitely try to keep that, his legacy alive, too, and, and um, you know, bring to the table what he brought. Yeah, and my great-grandma, for every holiday, you know, before we would eat, she would always pray. And then mm-hmm. <laughs> my great-grandma, she would always sit in the kitchen because she didn't like anybody going into the food without you know, making sure you washed her hands, but she didn't like anybody touching the food except for her. She didn't trust (laughs) (laughs) She didn't trust anybody. (laughs) I mean, Ashley, my whole family used to crack me up because I lived with her. She raised me as a kid. So I knew her little funny antics and whatever. Well, she would always say if somebody else came in the kitchen who wasn't somebody who lived in the house, did you wash your hands? You got enough on your plate? I mean, just little snickering (laughs) comments. That's funny. (laughs) But, I mean, you know, what can you say? I mean, considering that she came from a different time period. Right. You know, but I agree. It's different without her. But for some strange reason or another, whatever family gathering we do, whether it's, you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, Somebody always brings up a reference from Nanny. That was her name. We called her. We called her Nanny. Mm -hmm. And I always talk about her all the time. I mean, because she she comes to visit me often. I don't care what anybody says. People believe in different stuff. But for some reason, she always comes to visit. I bet she does. She wants to make sure you're washing your hands before you eat. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Or another thing that drives me crazy is when people after they eat they leave dishes in the sink oh just wash them that is the biggest pet peeve of mine is dishes in the sink even if it's just one spoon it drives me crazy (laughs) i mean because i was used to my great grandma always washing the dishes not one day did i come home from whether it was school or work where there was dishes in the sink never and so when I go to people's houses now and I see dishes piled up to heaven, I'm like, I got to wash these dishes. These cannot sit here. <laughs> No. Like I house sit for a good friend of mine. And, and, you know, I get it. He's busy. We all get busy. Right. But it's like, come on, dude. It's just you here. Why do you have dishes piled up to the sky? <laughs> right. And so whenever I go over there and I house sit for him, I will wash every single dish in that sink. You're such a good friend. That is so nice. Well, yeah. I mean, I like to help my friends out. And, you know, I don't like to leave people's houses gross, especially if I'm, you know, there, house sitting, whatever. I I don't like leaving people's houses nasty. So, yeah. So even when I go to other people's houses, if I see dishes in the sink, Sometimes I have to control myself not to wash them because everybody has different rules in their house. Right. (laughs) So don't leave dishes in the sink. It's gross. I agree. (laughs) So, you know, since I know we're very close to Christmas, what plans do you have, Ashley, for the Christmas holiday? Uh, Well, I'm excited. We're actually, so I have two children. So we're doing the Polar Express this year. (gasps) Um, 
That yeah, sounds fun. I know, and we've never done it. I've always wanted to do it. Um, and we got tickets this year and actually it's the beginning of December we're doing it. So, and my son's four. So, you know, Santa's a big deal in our house right now. So, um, I'm excited. The, uh, do you know about the Polar Express, the train you ride and you go to the North Pole and Santa visits and all that? Yeah. Is that on the scenic trail? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an exciting plan that we have, but, um, yeah, we, you know, lots of family time, you know, that's my favorite part about the holidays is the kids and spending time with family and cousins. And yeah, I'm just excited for all of it and presents and giving, you know, that's a big thing I'm trying to teach my kids. So, you know, we're donating to some families and things like that, just to kind of give back. I want to teach them that. So I'm excited about all of it. I love the Christmas time. I'm not mad it's not snowing yet. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, matter of fact, if it only snowed Christmas, even Christmas, I'd be totally cool with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. I. That's so cute. You know, you, you take your kids and, and do stuff with them. I, I applaud that. You know, because I think when it comes to holidays and things, it's not always about the gifts. Yeah. I, I think the biggest thing is spending time with family. Yep. I agree. That, Absolutely. that togetherness, that energy, um, you know, somebody at my job said that she's not buying her kids a lot of um, gifts this year for Christmas. She mm-hmm. said that she wants to buy them experiences. Like they, I think she said that she wants to take them to like Disney or something or the yeah, um, do it. Disney on ice or something like that. Yeah. And and I'm all for that. I really like that idea. I don't have any kids. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have a fur baby. If that counts, it counts. It counts. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Fletcher, um, my dog. He just turned three uh, this past month, and you know, we spend time together. I go and sit with them. You know, give them belly rubs and stuff. But <laughs> you know, that's what little dogs like. Yeah. And and so for me, I agree. I look forward to spending it with my family because I'm very close to them. Mm -hmm. You know, I just love that energy that we bring out whenever we're all together. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, it's all about those times. You know, we're not getting any younger. And, you know, family is really important. And, and I mean, I just remember, too, you know, when I was younger getting together, like Thanksgiving, Christmas were my favorite holidays. You know, we had a big family. I had tons of cousins and just spending time with my cousins and playing. And I mean, that's like that's that's the holiday to me for sure. But I love that your friend is doing experiences. We were I was just talking about this the other day is how, you know. I love, I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I love, you know, seeing my kids faces when they're opening gifts and they're excited, they're getting what they want and this and that. But really, I, I, I was thinking about it, you know, of all the presents I've bought, you know, throughout the cr- Christmases, there's not a ton. I mean, like if I look back, they don't really play with them for that long. <laughs> you spend hundreds of dollars and they're playing with them for two months. You if know, that. Like, and we actually, we do have a vacation planned in April. So I told my kids, I was like, listen, we're not doing a ton of presents. We have a vacation coming up, but I love the experiences. I think, you know, those memories are really important to kids and help them develop as children and just just really good childhood memories. So I love that idea. And we're going to start doing more of that, too, because those things are important. And those toys and those little things, I mean, they're material items. They're not they're not bad. Don't get me wrong, but. There's just better things you could do with your money with your family, you know? Yeah, and those material things, they break, they get lost, they get thrown away. And, you know, you want to capture those experiences. You can, you know, take pictures, you can take little videos, and you'll have those forever versus that G.I. Joe toy that you spent $50 on and the arm is gone in a week. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, I I agree. I, I look forward to the holidays and just making those memories with my family. So one of the series I'm working on this uh, holiday season is starting the new year off with positivity. So one of the topics I have in store for you today is if you're single and looking to mingle, I got some advice for you. My girl Ashley is going to hook us up today. So I'm going to introduce who Miss Ashley is. Ashley Bakewell is an experienced matchmaker with It's Just Lunch Cleveland. Her positive, 
outgoing and fun loving personality makes it easy for her to connect with clients and help them find the right match. Ashley gets to know each client individually and seeks to understand what they're looking for in a partner. Well, Ashley, I'm excited. I really want to, you know, give our listeners some hope out there. You know, I'm, I'm sure that it. there's some hopeless romantics like me who want to <laughs> give something another chance. So, you know, Ashley, just a basic question. What kind of sparked your interest in becoming a matchmaker? Oh, great question. So, um, interestingly enough, I've been bringing people together like my whole life, I'd like to say. Um, I've matched wow. friends that are still together till this day. Um, so I've, it's kind of been just a thing that has randomly came up in my life that I've just naturally done, right? So um, it's so rewarding, you know, when you get to help somebody find love. So when I had the opportunity to actually be a matchmaker full time as a career, you know, I jumped on it right away. That's interesting. I mean, how did you even stumble across this job? I mean, I just did a search on Google because a friend of mine at work said, you know, you should try matchmaking. I'm like, that stuff ain't real. I'm like, most people, <laughs> you know, go on Plenty of Fish, OK Cupid, and just kind of go from there. Or right. even, you know, Facebook's dove into the dating scene. So I'm like, this ain't real. And then when I typed in, I'm like, oh, I guess my friend was right. Yeah, it's real. And, you know, Portia, we've been around for 28 years of experience. So wow, we've been around for years and years. So it's interesting that you've never, you know, really heard much about it. But no, I actually used to serve um, years ago at a restaurant in Twinsburg. And um, I would wait on the it's just lunch dates. And that's where I kind of knew of it. And, um, you know, i I just found myself seeking, you know, a few years ago and I was like, oh my gosh, it's just lunch. So I just kind of found them and reached out a few times and, you know, here I am in the role. And I mean, not many people can say that they find help people find love every day. And I get to do that. And it's seriously the best job in the world. I mean, it sounds like you have to really kind of get a feel for your clients you know, and that and that's kind of my next question is how does the matchmaking process work? Yeah, great question. So, you know, it's just lunch our process. It's geared towards busy people who want to date but maybe don't have the time commitment and the hassle that goes along with it, right? Dating right now at this day and age, it's not easy. Um, I agree. So, our process it's simple you know it's convenient we set up lunch we'll do after um at weekday dates after um after work you know meet for a drink or we'll do weekend dates so we we're geared towards whatever you have available we work around your schedule um and they're really low pressure you know it's only an hour um there's no awkward emailing back and forth you know we handle all the details we believe that um, the best way to connect with somebody is to meet them face to face. You know, that's why our matchmakers, we meet all of our clients one one on one. We get to know them and we really understand what they're looking for. Um, and then we hand select matches for them. So um, we always follow up after the date too and get their feedback. You know, we're going to ask what you like, what maybe you didn't like. Um, you know, even if it wasn't a match, we want to get to know the process and, and what you thought about the date and that person so we can focus so we know what to focus on for your next match yeah i mean that that's amazing i i will say that the the fact that you guys take the time to kind of get to know each client you know and and really dive into who they are what they're looking for maybe their past dating experience yep I mean, that takes a lot of time from, you know, from an outsider perspective. And, you know, another this is kind of off topic, but, you know, it, this made me think of that show next. You know, how <laughs> one person would um, look at all these like six or seven different people and they would do the speed dating thing. They'd be like, next, yes. next. <laughs> and yes. I I'm glad that it's not like that because I'm like, man, that would be kind of a brutal dating scenario there. <laughs> yeah, that's a little brutal. No, we don't do anything like that. You know, we try to find as much as we can about the clients. We really get to know them. And the cool thing about it, Portia, is 
you literally have a whole team working for your success in the wow. dating world. You know, it's not just me. You know, it is me. I'm the matchmaker. I get to know you. But I also have a couple other client advisors that help out with the scheduling of the dates. And, you know, we have we have dating coaches. So it's really a whole team that is caring for you, working with you and helping you find that special person in your life and helping you get out of those bad habits. Some people have some bad mm. habits with dating and they may not even realize they're doing it or um, that it's kind of sabotaging some of their dates. And really, it's just, um, you know, it might be something silly, but we want to help you get out of those bad habits and and set you up for success. Well, and then when it comes to bad habits, I think a lot of people keep landing in those bad habits because they're used to it and they're exactly. kind of afraid to, you know, branch out to uh, something different. Yep, exactly. That's so key. You're so right. And, you know, that affects a lot of us, you know, whether not even just on a dating scale, but even look at people who are in professional jobs. You know, they they want to move up the ladder, but they're afraid of taking that next step. Yep. Because a part of them is is in that comfort zone. Yeah. Change is scary. I mean, and I understand it. You know, we, we all understand that it's just lunch. It's it's not easy to make changes in your life. And, um, you know, and, and some of my clients, they've been single for a few years. You know, they have their way, their routine, their specifics that they do every day. So, you know, when you bring somebody else in your life, those things change a little bit. So I understand it and, and I get it. But the reality is, is you know, if you want to be with somebody and you want to be in a relationship, you got to take some massive action on your dating life. And um, it's important if you the end goal is to be with somebody. Yeah, you have to know what you want. Yes, I, I think that's another thing that's an issue today is most people don't even know what they want. They just go with the first thing that pops up and then that's when things go sour because you see that you both are two different people or you both have two different wants. Yep. You know, two wrongs don't make it right. <laughs> yeah. Know. And I, I think that's important. You bring that up and I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that you did because you do need to know what you want. And I, and I recommend, you know, everybody taking the time, taking a few, you know, take an hour, sit down, write down what you're looking for. You know, make a list, but also be realistic. I feel some people in this day and age are very unrealistic when it comes to dating. And don't get yep. me wrong. I, everybody can have, you know, everybody deserves what they want. But what's more important? You know, what are those is is a, is a meeting a good person that wants to be committed to you that you have common interests with that want the same things, a family, kids. Are those more important or is somebody that is, um, you know, six, three taller than you more important? Not that I'm saying taller isn't a thing, but, right. you know, you really got to be realistic with your expectations and dating and weigh it out. You know, if you're going on a first date and you're having a good time, but there might be this one thing that, you know, was maybe in your eyes a red flag just is it was it really a red flag or are you just being picky you know what I mean you gotta just just go with the flow enjoy yourself and if you've had a good time go on a second date um, I highly recommend everyone going on second dates because a lot of mi missed connections are over a first date over something really silly yeah yeah I I can second with that Ashley because you know, I've I've been single about six years and okay. I've been on various dates with people I've met online mm -hmm. and I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. I really do. Mm -hmm. But I'm somebody who is a realist. If I don't see a spark, uh, you know, you can't beat a dead horse to life. Just sometimes when you go on dates you know, they look nice online and maybe you oh, text yeah. it back and forth. Or maybe you video chatted, but some people just aren't who they say they are when you meet them in person. Absolutely. I hear that from a lot of my clients. As a matter of fact, that's why a lot of them will hire me because 
there's so much and i hate to knock online dating there is success there don't get me right. wrong there can be success but it is a lot of work let mm-hmm. me tell you it's like a second job um but with that being <laughs> said you know <laughs> with that being said you know, it's a lot of like you just said misrepresentation you don't know what you're gonna get it's hit or it's miss it's time consuming you know sometimes you're gonna email back and forth for i don't know i mean i've heard people emailing back and forth for months i'm like what just get on a date what are you guys doing like <laughs> right you don't know if you're gonna date this person or be with this person until you actually meet them face to face to face so mm-hmm. um and it's interesting too i heard i was at a matchmaking convention um in may and i was talking to one of my other matchmaker friends and um she was telling me some statistics that she had found out about online dating. Um, and it literally blew my mind. I'll tell you them. So, um, there's more than 6,400 dating apps out there. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And this is in May. I guarantee it's, it's way more than that now. Um, and if you're on a dating app on your phone, like swiping like Tinder or Match or whatever it is, if you're on your phone on this dating app for about 45 minutes to an hour, you swipe through an average of 2,000 people. What? Isn't that so sad? You said 2,000 people? About 2,000. So if you're on Tinder for an hour, you know, you swipe right, swipe and left. You're going through about 2,000 people. Wow. I don't even think I have 2,000 friends. <laughs> I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, there is, there's such a need for, you know, quality dating. And, you know, online, it's just, it's just sad that, you know, people, that's, that's what we've come to is this phone and what, you know, looks, it's just, you know, about looks and, and, and I get it. Don't get me wrong. There is success there. I've seen it. I have friends, but it's hard to find online. It really is hard to find. So I say, you know, my best advice for, for people that are dating online is just don't, don't get discouraged. There's a lot of discouragement based on, Mm -hmm. you know, what's happening, but stick with it and go on a lot of dates, you know, be very, um, admin about getting out there getting face to face with somebody because again you don't know if you want to be in a relationship some with somebody you're not going to know until you actually meet them face to face exactly and the other thing don't be afraid to be vulnerable right yes that's the other thing too that i think is really biting people is they're afraid of giving a little bit of themselves for fear of getting hurt yep getting hurt in dating it's going to happen i mean it's all it's going to happen it's dating you know i I tell all my clients i'm very transparent with them when they come on board you know it's dating i can't take the dating out of dating right i I can't do anything to change that but what i can do is get you in front of people like-minded professionals just like you that you would want to date i just can't guarantee that there is a chemistry spark but that vulnerability is important because you're not really being yourself on that day if you've got you know you've got all these things up that you can't let loose and be yourself does that make sense yeah i mean you you've put a wall up where you only it's like i use the door analogy you know you you have your front door and then you have the little peephole that you can look out of so it's like you'll look out the peephole just a little bit and then maybe if they give a little bit of information, you'll open the door slightly and give some back and then close it. You know? <laughs> yep. No, that's so true. I mean, open the door a little bit. I I agree with having your guard up on, on getting to know somebody. I agree. I think that's important. But also, you know, don't don't be so guarded that you can't be yourself and act yourself and be honest. Does that make sense? You know, yeah. you be, be the person that you are. Sure. Have your guard up. You don't want to get hurt, but you don't know unless you just go in, right? You got to get to know this person, go on a few dates. I mean, you're really not going to know if you want to date somebody until after a handful of dates. So just do it, get out there. So if you're online date or any dating, you know, just the more you're out there and putting yourself out there, the the more success you will have. Absolutely. And I'd but say be safe. Yeah. Definitely oh, be yeah. Safe while doing it. That's important, too. I want to bring that up. You know, definitely be safe. Be smart. You know, you never know. So, you know, pr- 
have those cautions up too. Right. Yeah. Because online, there's a lot of gray area in there. There you know, is. <laughs> and and my, my rule is, uh, Ashley, I use the three strike rule. You know, in baseball, three strikes are out. Yeah. Use that when it comes to dating. Three strikes. Definitely I use agree. three strikes. I think that's good. I think, um, you know, it goes to the point I was just saying, you know, if you're on a first date and there might be a little red flag or, I don't know, um, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, I don't know. He, he says something about a past relationship that you didn't care for mm-hmm. which one don't be talking about past relationships on dates first off everybody don't do that that's not that's definitely not attractive to talk about but if somebody is talking about you know my ex oh he was just i don't know they say something bad about them people may think that as a bit red flag sure but you don't know the story right right don't, and don't get on that story on that first date definitely don't do that but that you know i would just let it go flow off you know if he's everything you're looking for if he meet if he's a good person and he wants to you know get to know you and you're attracted to him and there's a little spark there continue to get to know them because you compromise sometimes on things to get to 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 be with people right i mean right you've been in a relationship you've probably compromised on things you normally wouldn't you know it goes the same with dating sometimes so, you know, Ashley, just kind of a question. Um, once you set up a, you know, match um, two people, set them up on a date and stuff like that. Let's say if maybe somebody that you match hasn't been on a date in a little while, you know, maybe they've been out of the loop, you know, kind of what are some, I guess, conversation questions or icebreakers they could, you know, discuss on their first date? You know, I do work with a lot of people that haven't dated in a while. I work with a lot of widows, too. So this may be their first date in 40 years. Um, Yeah. So, yeah, I I think some good topics to talk about is, well, first off, get to know each other a little bit. What's your background? Where'd you go to school? Tell me about your job. Those things are important. You want to learn. You want to learn more about them. But, um, you know, also ask, you know, what are some things you like to do when you're not at work, you know? that's where you guys are going to find your commonality. It's right. Some things you have in common, what things you like, you know, traveling's a pretty big topic with a lot of my clients, you know, have you been traveling? Do you, where do you want to go? Um, I also think it's not a bad idea to ask like, you know, what's your, what's, where do you want to be in 10 years? You know, kind of getting that background too, because that'll give you a good idea of, you know, does it line up? Does it align with what you're looking for in 10 years? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, some topics I tell my clients to stay away from on a first day would be um, politics. And um, yeah, it's, it's a touchy subject these days, but to stay away from it. Not that I'm saying it's not important. It is important. I get it. But don't there's no need to talk about it on a first day. Same with religion. Religion. I get it. It's important to a lot of my clients, but you don't need to get into this, you know, conversation about religion. You're not. Um, past relationships, you know, those are things that you should want to stay away from. If they come up, keep it light, you know, don't get in a conversation about your ex-boyfriend and how much you hated him. Nobody wants to hear that. Right. So, um, you know, keep the conversations light. Don't get super, super in depth on a first date. You just want to get to know each other just a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, just test the waters, you know, kind of like if if you're learning to swim, you're not going to jump in head first. Yeah. And you know, and don't make it an interview session. You know, I hear that sometimes from clients like, oh, I was on a date last week and, you know, I felt like I was at a a job interview, you know, definitely don't, you know, when you you come to a commonality you're talking about, talk about it for a little while. Don't skip past it and ask another question, you know, right. You know, if I'm talking to you, Portia, and we both really like swimming, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to have that conversation about swimming with you. Where do you like to go swim and things like that. So, um, you know definitely keep the conversation flowing that's really important yeah and you know and and back to what you were saying about common things you know whether it's a hobby traveling and i think the really important one where do you want to be in five years ten years that's something i ask good whenever i go on a date i have a top five list of things i ask and that's one of them you know where do you want to be in ten years five years You know, what goals do you have? Um, You know, do you want a family if you don't already have kids? 
you know, just kind of gauge like where your priorities are. Yeah. It's important. Also be optimistic about it too. You know, you're not, I've seen matches before where they didn't have a lot in common, but I just knew that this is a match. You know, I, I, I they, maybe they didn't line a line in every section, mm-hmm. but you know, there may be, we call those like out of the box matches, you know, cause they're just a little, little out of the box than they normally would probably date, but it's worked. Um, so I think being, you know, being, um, knowing that you're not going to align on every single thing is important. And that goes back to that compromising, you know, Mm -hmm. you might meet Joe and he's a great guy and he like loves to snowboard. You've never snowboarded a day in your life. Matter of fact, you don't even like the snow. That doesn't (laughs) mean that doesn't mean you can't like Joe and date him. Cause guess what? Maybe you like snowboarding, but you've just never done it. Or maybe you're totally fine with hanging out in the lodge and drinking some mimosas while your man's snowboarding. You know what I <laughs> right. mean? It's, it's, you, you're not going to align on everything. So being, you know, more open-minded is really important when it comes to dating. Yes, I, I agree with that to 100%. You know, and that's another thing I think people have a, a, a not exactly clarity on. They think that their potential match has to have 100% everything that they want. Yes. And you have to be realistic. Do you want to date a twin of you? I mean, (laughs) not trying to be funny, but do you? I've heard the phrase opposites attract, and I always see that a lot. Yeah. When I see happy couples, they, at least the ones that I've met who have been together 20 plus years... Mm-hmm. They're both very different, but they have those commonalities that keep them together. Yeah. Right. You know, I see that a lot. You know, I have um, I have people that'll call me and say, I want A, B, C, and D, and I'm not going to open up at it. And, you know, the first thing I say to them is, listen, I get it. I understand that's what you want. And I will do my best to find what you want, but I need you to be a little more open-minded to the fact that it's dating. You know, that's where it comes back to weighing what's most important to you. Um, You know, don't, don't, don't um, like brush somebody off just because they're not over six foot tall. And with that fact, did you know that only 15% of um, people in the world are only over six feet tall? 15%. 15%. How many people that's do we it. have in the world? Over over 8 billion? Yeah, that's it. So the average height of a man is 5'10", 5'11", I would say. Um, but with that being said, you know, is that is that really the most important thing to you? Is it really? Because it's probably not, you know? Um, but yeah, I think it's important to be optimistic and, um, you know, be positive on dates and, and things like that. But be open. Be open to... Um, different what's important yeah to being different yeah because i mean i've seen i'll give you an example i had um about a year ago it was probably in the beginning of the year last year i had a couple go on a date they were definitely different um he was a little more blue collar i would say she was a little more professional but um both really great people so uh they went out they went out to delmonico's we set them up um in independence and um, you know, the next day I'm getting their feedback. So I'm talking to her and she's going on and on and how great of a time they had. They were together for four hours, which, you know, that's a really long first date, by the way. Right. Um, she's going on and on about how great he was. He was funny. Um, you know, he hit a lot of what she's looking for. So I said to her, well, well, great. Well, when's the second date? You guys exchanged numbers, right? And she's like, yeah, we did. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go out with him again. And I'm like, what? Why? You just went on for, I'm not kidding. You went on for six minutes about how great of a time you had. And she's like, you know, I just really wasn't that attracted to him. Like physically. And I was like, okay, all right. I get that. I know that's important. So, and then I I encouraged her, you know, he's going to reach out to you because I'm pretty sure he liked you. Um, But uh, he reached out to her. So I encouraged her, go on a second date, see where it goes. Like, 
you had a really good time. What, what are you going to lose the next time? Having another really good time, but maybe he's not the, the connection you're looking for. So they went out again. They're still in a relationship to this day. So that's just a really good example. And attraction never came up again. Because guess what? That chemistry, that attraction developed once she got to know that person. So um, it's just a great example of, of an almost missed opportunity. That And they're still really happy and in a healthy, committed relationship to this day. That's amazing. I'm glad that yeah. she... Not to say that we all have things that we find physically attractive and things that we don't, but I'm glad she looked somewhat over that and more so into the personality per yep. portion of this man. And, and that's the problem I have is that, yeah, I have things that I find physically attractive about men that I want to date, but if we don't have that personality that mixes well, Mm, that's a big no for me. Yeah. Because personality also, is big. Yeah, and also keep in mind, too, it's a first date. First dates are somewhat challenging sometimes. There's nerves. You know, people are nervous. You never know what's going on in that person's life. You know, and, and this should just be a, a lesson for everybody to, um, like a reminder for everybody to think on a daily basis when talking to anybody. But on a first date, you got to think about that too. You know, I've had clients where I've had a client lose his job and still went on a date that night. <laughs> and Hey, he, nothing wrong with that. Or I, actually, I don't think he lost his job. I think he, he, uh, it was, he was getting a promotion and he, he ended up not getting it, but he had been promised it. Right. So he was devastated. He goes on the date and in literally 30 minutes in, he was like, I am so sorry. I just, my head isn't in the game right now. I like you. I'd love to go out with you again. I just, and he told her, you know, I was supposed to get this promotion today. I didn't get it. Um, but I definitely want to see you again. You know, can we do this another time? And as though it was a little odd for her, they went out again and they're actually in a relationship too, but it's just, you got to remember it's a first date. There's nerves. You know, some people are a little more um, introverted than extroverted on a first date. But once you get to know them, they're a little more outgoing, right? Um, everybody has those things. So you got to be open to that too and remind it. Remind yourself, okay, she was a little, he was a little quieter than I'd like, but, you know, I'm going to go out again with him and see how it goes because you just don't know. Or, oh, he didn't really have a great sense of humor. Well, this guy's cracking me up every time I talk to him. So I don't know what you're talking about. Go on a second date and see where it goes. So you just got to remember it's a first date and I've, so many things come into play on a first date. Yeah, just go in open minded. I think that's yep. that's the best approach when it comes to a date. Similar. Yep. Don't look at it like an interview. Just look at it as a conversation. Yep, Exactly. Ashley, thank you again for coming on and just shedding some light on the matchmaking process and, you know, giving people like me hope that there is somebody out there for us. There is. Yes, there is hope. And don't be discouraged. You know, um, there is somebody out there for everybody. And I truly believe that. And don't don't lose that. Don't lose it. Now, Ashley, for, you know, it's just lunch Cleveland. Do you guys just strictly set people up on dinner dates or is there other types of dates that you guys do? So we'll do whatever's convenient for our clients. So we'll do lunch dates. We'll do after work, you know, meet for drinks. Um, we say meet for drinks, but I have clients that also aren't big drinkers. So you can have a nice tea or a lemonade, whatever you prefer. Um, but we'll also do weekend dates, brunches, evenings. So whatever's convenient for our clients, we're going to make that work. So we do, we do all kinds of different dates. Excellent. What's been the most, I guess, interesting date setup that you've had to do? Interesting date setup? Yeah, I mean, have you... Because, see, I know me, I'm not just the traditional dinner date or lunch date person. I like to actually do something. So one of the most funnest dates I had was at an arcade. Oh, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, I definitely encourage doing fun things, especially... You know, it's hard sometimes on a first date... Um, but you know, I've heard, you know, we'll set up a lot of dates in Ohio city. That's a pretty popular area. And I've heard oh, yeah. a lot of clients like going and grabbing ice cream and walking around after their date. You know, usually our first dates are always, um, like a meet at a restaurant, um, just because it's the easiest for them to connect. Um, but I definitely encourage if you're having a good time, you know, go on a walk, 
go to the park, go get ice cream, go, or, and then the second day, you know, go on a bike ride, you know, do something fun. Um, you know, go on a hike. I have a lot of active clients that, you know, like to, like to hike and bike and do all that stuff. So, you know, do that on a second day. It's definitely mix it up. Mixing it up is important. Yeah. I mean, don't do the same stale thing. Go to lunch, go to dinner, breakfast. And I feel like you don't really get to know the person that well. Yeah, when you do I that. agree. Yeah. And, you know, Ashley, another question kind of, you know, on the lines of, you know, picking a location or, or an activity, you know, I guess what are kind of some tips you can give people, you know, just, you know, relax and maybe giving the person a second chance or a third chance? Um, I would say tips I would give, you know, communication is really important. Um, you know, always be clear with your expectations um, as far as tips go for dating. But, um, you know, whether you're just looking for love or starting the date, always be yourself. If that's really important. Um, you know, be optimistic. We talked a lot about that. You know, first and foremost, you, you've got to be you have to be optimistic to find love or it's going to be a lot harder to find. Let me tell you, hmm. um, you know, it can seem scary. And it may take some time to find Mr. Right or Mrs. Right, but you got to remind yourself to be hopeful and positive. Um, you know, one of the biggest things I hear on my dates is, you know, positivity is really important. Does he have a good, out him or her have a good outlook on life and is positive, is happy? You know, most of my clients, they're at a point where they're really enjoying their lives, their careers, their kids. Right. Um, you know, everything's great, right? But they're really just missing that one piece, which is somebody to share it with. Um, so I think that's really important. But yeah, get out of your comfort zone. We talked a little bit about that, too. You know, chances are you've spent a lot of times doing things a certain way and you've probably gotten into a nice routine. You step out of it, breaking out of your comfort zone and trying new things. Also, you, you'll also open yourself up to meeting new people, too. You know, even... Like, like I talked to somebody uh, recently, you know, she's a single mom and she's busy, right? She's right. busy being a single mom. She's busy with a full-time career and she has the same routine every day, you know, whether it's going, picking up the kids, going to the grocery store, going home, cooking dinner, going on a walk, you know, it's basically the same routine. I told her, mix it up, you know, go to a different place and take a walk, go to a different grocery store. Um, just do mix up your routine a little bit. That's a good way to get to meet new people as well. Yes. Um, but give chemistry a chance. You know, that is my biggest advice is don't make a snap judgment on a first date. You know, if the person doesn't measure up, you know, they don't have to check every box that you want. You know, right. you have to remember to give chemistry a chance. And it may take a couple of dates before you realize this person is a potential option for a relationship right and, and that's goes back to being optimistic and yep. and you know having that positivity you know around you so Ashley you know if somebody one of our listeners was potentially interested in you know learning more about it's just Cleveland is there a website or a phone number that they can call yeah so I would go to it's just lunch cleveland.com um, you can just fill out your name and we'll give you a call. We'll reach out to you. We'll tell you all about what we do. Um, you know, I'll go over how things work in, you know, more detail. And um, if it's a good fit for you, we'll schedule an interview and we'll go from there. So it's just lunchcleveland.com is a good place to start. All right. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you got me interested. Actually. Yeah. I mean, because <laughs> like I said, I've, I've been single about six years and I, I love it when people ask me, well, why have you been single so long? And oh, I always I tell them, you know, <laughs> and and I get it all the time. And I tell people, you know, I'm I'm a realist. I don't like to waste people's time. And I don't like my time to be wasted. Right. And, and I don't settle. I, I will not settle for just anything. Like, yeah, you know, some people, somebody may look good on the outside, but on the inside, they're they're tore up. Right. I have my own baggage to <laughs> carry around, yet alone have to carry around yours and mine. Right. Yeah. And I think that's pretty common. You know, everybody has a little baggage, right? Everybody's got a little bit of it. Um, is it 
that little bit that can you can be okay with and and you can deal with that in your life or is it too much you know you you got to think about that too yeah yeah absolutely and but it's also you know that baggage is also might be the reason why it makes that person so unique and makes them such a good person too yes and you know i think baggage is just experience yep I right. mean, because it, it makes you who you are and and you want the person who you want to be with to accept you for the person who you are, not the the baggage you carry. Yep, exactly. And, and that's the other thing I think is is a problem today is a lot of people look at that and say, oh, no, no, that's it. So, you know, and and actually, I'm somebody who's been on the online dating platforms for a couple years. Mm -hmm. And I will agree. They are hit or miss. It is. And I've met, (laughs) I have a lot of friends, but it's like, I don't want to keep adding to my (laughs) friends list of people. (laughs) I mean, you go on those dates where you know that it's just, you're not compatible with this person. And in a nice way, you try to tell them like, you know, Hey, thanks for the good time. Right. But, you know, I think we're just two different people. And then they say, well, we can always be friends. No, I think there's yeah. a hint. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. And that's when you come back and say, you know, I'm not I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make a love connection. Yeah. Sorry. I wish you the best of luck. You know, I'm sure you'll find somebody really great. I mean, I think that honesty is so important when it comes to online dating, too, because guess what? Sometimes people need to hear that. Yes, they, need they do. To hear that. Hey, listen, I was going to go on a second date with you. I really liked you on our first date, but you haven't stopped texting me, you know, and we just went out two days ago, you know, and not that I, I sometimes it's a little brutal and I don't want to be brutal by any means. I don't want to hurt feelings, but sometimes that little extra honesty can really help that other person out when it comes to meeting somebody. Yeah, and you know, it may hurt for a little bit, but at least you are transparent and not yep, exactly. You know, continuing to stream people along. Yeah, don't do that. I hate, you know, I hate when pe- I hear that happening, you know. If you didn't like that person or you know that this is not a fit, I don't want to go on a second date, do not give your number to them. Exactly. Like, or it just don't because it gets hopes up. And or say, yeah, or don't say, yeah, I'd love to go out again when you don't. Don't do that. This is what is wrong and why dating is so hard is because you're you're giving these false hopes when there's really no hope in it at all in your eyes. So that's important to recognize, too. Yep. Just empty actions without, you know, thoughts behind it. And you you can be nice. You Mm -hmm. can be really nice and gentle about turning somebody down. There is a good way to go about it. And you can say nice things to do it. So, um, you don't have to be, you know, saying mean things. Oh, you are, you are way too crazy. I don't want to date you. You know, you can be, you can be really nice about it. I I agree. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Ashley, you know, for coming on here, you know, before I let you go, I want to leave our listeners with a quote today that one of my good friends told me years ago, if I do what I always did, I'll get what I always got. So be open minded people when it comes to, you know, going on dates, that person's out there for you. Just be patient.